Bug out, yep. Angelo? Who's Angelo? I don't know. Hi. Oh, Nazar Hart. Awesome. Say my name. No, yeah. fuck. Oh, no, no, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, got commentary of the finals? No. Why? They just wanted to say hi. We're about to start this. Trevor's going to do the commentary. Uh, what's the finals? Uh, we're not doing the finals. This is third and fourth, and then we do the finals after. Really? Yeah. Oh, you want to do, oh, you want to do this both? Okay. Yeah, okay. All right. So everyone I found Nazar, everyone wanted you all weekend, so. Okay. Uh, who's commentary? This guy? Yeah. Can do, can do finals? No, a lot of people. Uh, they're like Fraser's gonna do the finals. How do this? And he no. does the thing with the Fraser. No, he has to do the, like he's the one that operates this. All right, All right. bye guys. <laughs> All right, I found Nazar. You guys happy? I'm back. I saved you guys. <laughs> Everyone wants this. <laughs> He sounds like a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> All right, welcome back, Trevor. Sorry about that. I couldn't resist Trevor. He, Nazar was so close, and everyone kept asking for him all weekend. So, let's see how my fantasy team's doing so far. Oh, wow, I'm up 72 to 9.6. That is incredible. The Chicago defense, has, or the Cincinnati defense, has scored me 24 points. That's awesome. Vincent Jackson. 15.4. LaShawn McCoy, 16.1. I heard he got hurt, though. That's disappointing. Carson Palmer, 15.3 at half. No, a little bit past the half. So he starts with uh, Sacred Swords. Sacred Sword. All right, so we got a Dragon Ruler versus Dragon Ruler matchup. Are these the actual Dragon Ruler decks? Isn't one of them running? Yes. There's no variants here? Okay. Well, yeah. this is the three cards of consonants, I think. Oh, yeah. The, the, I think. The crazy one. Yep. Yeah, no, no. Mike's playing uh, Dragoonity Ruler. Okay, that's what it is. Dragoonity Ruler yeah. versus Dragon Ruler. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, he runs the uh, the two Phalanx and the Corsesca. Okay, yeah. So. So they'll be playing for the trophy, the third place trophy. That's one of the biggest differences between third and fourth place here at the ARG Circuit Series. I am Joe Delano, joined with Trevor Tibbetts, welcoming all 890 players for the third and fourth playoff. At the conclusion of this, we'll be jumping right into the finals match between Carl Madigate and Jerry Lee Williams. Now oh, look at that. LaShawn McCoy's back in the game after getting hurt. That's good. All right, so... Andrew's going to be able to resolve a Dragon's Ravine. First we've seen on the table in this matchup today. Uh, I believe he actually played one. And pitched. And it was MST and they played another? They played another one. Yeah, absolutely. That's what I meant. Oh, okay, I guess technically the second one. And a Maxi is to the blaster. So Mike's using the Maxi in the early stages of the game to try and sculpt a hand. And he gets Maxi'd. So again, this is the third and fourth playoff for those who are just joining us. At the conclusion of this, we'll be jumping right into the finals between Jerry Williams and Carl Madigate. But first, these players have to play for the shiny third place Ultra Reality Game Circuit Series trophy. I'd like to welcome all 889 viewers from all around the world. I am Joe Giolano. This is Trevor Tibbetts. We are here in Worcester, Massachusetts for the third Ultra Reality Game Circuit Series event and the first time that we brought you live coverage from day one, from 10 o'clock in the morning yesterday, all the way up into the finals today. So Mike Espianzo, examining his reasonable hand size, it looks like he has about seven or so cards in hand. I can see Mistletane, it looks like. Oh, no, he's not running Mistletane, is he? No, no Mistletane. Was it? No, he's not running Mistletane. That's interesting. Yeah, Mike Espianzo is not playing Mistletane, but he's playing three ducks and two failings. So looks like he'll be ditching... Tempest and Phalanx to activate. Tempest effect. Allowing him to send... All right, add Blaster Juice and Fantastic. So, Tempest is amazing at sculpting what colors you need. Sorting them out, making sure you have access to all the colors. How shiny is the trophy? I think the trophy is pretty shiny. It has this nice red shiny part to it. It's great. It's a third place trophy, though. Jerry and Carl will be playing for the first place trophy after this.
Yep, Jerry Williams and Carl Mantegate is the finals match. Oh, S. Espinosa. So. Oh, I see. While I passed Spanish, I never did quite well. At it. <laughs> So, using ducks and yeah, this is. Been some, I don't think I've seen ducks not get maxied this entire tournament. Or if I have, it must not have been something I remembered because it seems like every single time we see ducks failing maxi every single time today, and yesterday. Oh, someone that's asking what's the importance of this game. This is the third and fourth. They're playing for the third place trophy. Fourth place, unfortunately, walks home without a trophy, while third place wins the Ultra Reality Games trophy. And at the conclusion of this match, we'll be jumping right into the finals of the ARG Circuit Series between Jerry Williams and Carl Mattigate. So these are the players who unfortunately lost on the top four and are playing for the opportunity to take home the third place trophy. So Mike's going to be playing through the Maxi and presumably going to HTS. That's what he's been doing most often. Yep. Oh, no, Vandriana. Vandriana. Perhaps he's going to use Vadriana's effect to increase the attack by sending Phalanx to the graveyard. That makes more sense to me rather than mm. special summoning. Oh, 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 never mind. He's just going to go right into it. So Mike has shown the willingness to play through Max C's this weekend. Yeah. Going into Colossal Fighter, allowing Andrew to draw yet another card. And presumably he'll be able to try and attack in the Blaster, but that'll force Mike to special summon the Colossal Fighter back and allow Andrew to draw yet another card. Discards two Redox. To try Special and summons oh, wow. the Tempest. He must somehow believe he can win the game this turn. This is incredible. Banishing. Oh, Redox and Vadri on some of the last. So he's going for it. Crashing in. Bringing back Colossal Fighter, allowing Andrew to get another card, and attacking. Oh, I'm supposed to get a card to send that away. So, so the no damage? No damage, yep. So Mike is not in a good position here. He'll probably spe special summon in main phase two, and Andrew will draw yet another card. And then he'll be able to begin his turn with what will presumably be a hand of about 10, 11, maybe even 12 cards. Is it me, Scoops? Yep. Yeah, Mike's a scoop. So Mike takes down or Mike unfortunately is hit with a maxi and falls to Andrew. Andrew takes game one. What well, seemed like relatively easy fashion. Let's take a look at what these players are side deck. Andrew's yet to be put onto the camera, so let's take a look at what he has in his deck in more detail. Normal dragon rooms, three of each, triple maxi, a veiler, a scarecrow, two flame guards, and three Corsescas. Andrew's playing three Corsescas in his deck. This is a very interesting deck. No copies of Cards of Continents, though he has five targets. In terms of the side deck, he'll probably be putting in some number of his three debunks. His Mystical Space Typhoons, which he has two in the main, one in the side. It'll be interesting to see if he decides to go to three. Other than that, he has a Snipe Hunter. I'm not sure exactly what that's used for. And then two copies of Electric Virus. So the Electric Virus is definitely coming in. In terms of the main deck, a card that we were worthy taking out. He is main decking a Terraforming, which can be coming out. Some number of Corsescas can come out. His drop lineup, pretty standard. Standard array of cards, not necessarily. There's really no set standard in terms of cards. But he has a Trap Stun, two Wing Blast, a Regeki Break, a Bottomless, a Return, a Vanity's Empties, and a Sixth Sense for his main deck. It'll be interesting to see if he decides to take any of those out, like a Regeki Break or one of the Wing Blasts. Perhaps take out. Veiler. No, no. 
Mike's playing the Dragoon Indies. There's no way he's taking Valor out. So he only has to side in the three debunks and the two viruses. So he'll have five cards to side in, almost guaranteed. Taking out, I would guess, one or maybe a Corsesca and a guard. Having five tunis is just insane. And then just some number of the other cards. It's really terraforming, so it's three. Maybe bottomless, but it's tough. Perhaps he assumes that most players will be willing to side out six cents, which is not the case for Mike. Mike is not playing six cents anywhere in his deck. On Mike's side of the table, it'll be interesting to see if he decides to keep Royal Decree in his deck. Of course, the Mythic Wrath Famous will stay in his deck. From the side deck, we talked about this with Fraser the previous round, but Solemn Warning is a solid card to be putting in. I mean, Fraser, we're talking about it against Mythic Dragons, but Solemn Warning is one of my favorite cards. Unfortunately for Mike, Andrew's playing Swift Scarecrow instead of something like Battle Fader, so it's not like the Solemn Warning will be able to stop the Battle Fader in the battle phase. But looks like these players are just finishing up shuffling. It'll be interesting to see exactly what cards they decide to side deck in. I'd like to welcome all 905 viewers from all around the world. I'm Joe Orlando, joined here with Trevor Tibbetts. Hello. To my right, bringing you live coverage of the Alts Reality Games Circuit Series here in Worcester, Massachusetts. It's the third ever Alts Reality Games event. And the first time we've had coverage from round one live on Twitch all the way up to the final. So we'll begin game two here with Mike seeing how many spell cards he can open with. Answer is zero in which he'll activate on the first turn. He'll simply set a back row and pass over to Andrew. We will have the opportunity to play his spell. It'll be interesting. Could it be a rough panel set? Does he have the guts to activate Sword? Well, no, they'll activate Dragon's Arena. Which, of course, can play around with the rough panel the entire game. The advantage of Sword and Trading and Consonants and those type of cards are useful, but if you have Dragon's Ravine and have enough Dragon Rulers from the early stage of the game, you can just win without it. Hey, someone recognized you as Boxman. Yeah, he's from the Smash community. Oh, absolutely. Shows to, shows to EE. What is that card? Is that? Trigodia? Trigodia, oh, yeah, it's, it's ultimate right, Trigodia. It's difficult to tell. So he takes a 28? Mm hmm Just a huge shout out to Trevor. He's been the one with all the graphics on the screens, changing the light points, changing the names, switching scenes, all a lot of his own equipment. So this has been in large part due to his commitment this weekend here at the Ultra Rally Game Circuit Series event in Worcester, Massachusetts. Thank so. you, Joe. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, this is, for, in fact, the third and fourth playoff. These players are playing for the shiny third-place trophy. At the conclusion of this match, we'll be jumping into Jerry Williams versus Carl Mantigate, playing for the first-place trophy and the honor to call themselves champion of the Ultra Reality Game Circuit Series in Worcester, mm -hmm. Massachusetts. So Effect Veiler on Trigodia's effect to try and steal the blaster. Yeah, that's pretty big because it'll keep Trigodia's attack at zero for the remainder of the turn as well, which may become relevant. If you can somehow attack over the blaster, you won't be able to then attack with anything for your Trigodia. And it looks like Mike's simply going to pass over to Andrew, who adds blaster back to his hand during the end phase. And is that a six sense? What other card would be activating in the end phase? Oh, no, it's rejected. All right, it makes sense. So we presumably targeting the back row. Yep, Mike's back row, which is a bottomless trap ball. So now Andrew will have a turn where he doesn't have to worry about Mythic Wrath panel. A turn we can activate Sword. A turn we can activate Cards of Continence. Activates Ravine. Yeah, and a turn where he can continue using his Ravine. Once you get all four colors through Ravine, it's just absolutely incredible. You can see here that he has a Swift Scarecrow in his hand. So if Mike does try to pull off one of those turns under Maxi of where he tries to win the game. Andrew will have the Swift Scarecrow to stymie that. So it seems like title will be brought to the field by uh, a Dragon will be brought to the field by Bench and two others. Andrew's just confirming in, in his mind which one is correct to do. Yeah, you see him decide. 
Of course, the third and fourth and the finals here at the Ultra Rev Game Circuit Series are not timed. Slow play warnings can be issued, but there is no time limit for these matches. All the way from the top eight through the finals, we play full games of, you, of this game in its full integrity. So Rangers elected to summon Tempest by banishing Title and Blaster, allowing him to add a Flameball Guard and a, another copy of Title to his hand. The Flameball Guard will be used to Synchro Summon into presumably what will be a Crimson Blader at this point. That seems like the... Trigodi is at 2,400 defense. So, yeah, it's a Crimson Blader here is just huge. Yeah, all right, yeah, Mike sees it right on the wall. He's going to put Trigodi in the graveyard even before Crimson Blader technically hits the field. So now it's Mike's turn. Let's see what he can do. It looks like he has his own Dragon Arena, which will be... And see, at this point, it's obviously good to get Andrews off the field, but Andrews already gotten all of the incremental value from the first few turns where he was ditching to get the other colors. And that'll be discarding Ducks here. I thought a card of Consonants in his hand, so presumably he'll go get a Phalanx. Yeah, absolutely. Phalanx discarded with cards of Consonants. Hopefully cycle into a hand, sculpt a hand where he can make some type of comeback. He's down the first game, had to play into a maxing, was unable to muster up enough. Oh, look at this sword and cards gone. And so Mike's really been sorting much through his deck this turn. Blaster will presumably allow him to side or add into his hand another copy. He drew return, so oh, he's got at least another turn. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, that card, no matter what it seems like, will delay the game or simply just end the game on, on the spot. So even with all the draw power, Mike is under the effect of Crimson Blade for this turn and is in a position where he really... Oh, wow, he said, oh, wow, look at this. Four Packers and a monster. Curious what he set. Quick look at his deck list. There's no obvious card for him to be setting in this situation. Is it Flame Blood Guy? Yeah, yeah, he starts Flame Blood Guy, right? Off the what blaster. What well, did he search flame like out off the blaster? I did not see that. Uh, I wasn't sure. I'm trying to figure out what he might have said. And if he's setting a monster, he must have some type of luck to the Crimson Blader, which must be compulsory evacuation device. Yeah, that must be what it is. Unless he plays or puts breakthrough skill into this match, but I highly doubt that. So presumably we can assume he has a compulsory evacuation device set. Yeah. Guard, return, compulse, and something else. Okay. Yeah, he definitely does not want to see that Crimson Blader destroy that Flame Bell Garden. Return for the different dimension to be shut off on the following turn, forcing Mike to use it on his turn, but even if the dragons go to his hand or to the graveyard, he might be in a position where it doesn't matter. Because he's under Flame Bell Guard. He pops Compulse. So it was Compulse. All right, see. Return. All right, so it's car cards are constants. One of the other sets, so one of the viewers says. You know, trying looking at the, the field and the comments and the Twitch chat. It's difficult to have the eyes all over the place. See all the cards in their hand. So thank you guys for cooperating with us. Chatting in. Looks like we have... 929 viewers all around the world. I'd like to welcome you if this is the first time you're joining in. I'm Joe Gilando here with Trevor Tibbetts. We're looking at the third and fourth playoff between Mike Espinsola and Andrew Paler right before the finals between Jerry Lee Williams and Carl Matigate. Manigat. I forget what his name was. Carl Manigat. Manigat. Okay, that's what it is. Manigat. So Andrew here is going to be banishing a, a title. Oh, what's that? A guard and a tempest to summon. Yeah, Andrew's another one of those very deliberate players who thinks through all the situations. It's looking like a title. It looks like it. Well, he's, <laughs> and now he's like a blast at the top of his hand. Yeah. Again, there's no time here in the third and fourth playoff, and there's been no time since the top eight. 
allowing these players the full leverage to think through their decisions. I did not play sports in high school to whoever just asked. Not for a team or anything. So, see, compulsory evacuation device put, oh, this is huge. Compulsory evacuation device put Crimson Later back into the extra deck. So now that it's there, he'll be able to use his effect veiler on the title to summon it back and then attack into the flame ball guard. Andrew must have a read that Mike assumed his flame ball guard would be safe because of the compulse. Oh, did he do that in battle phase, though? Um, oh, yeah, that was difficult to tell with their handmaster. So if he did the compulse in the battle phase, then... Probably. Yeah, more than likely. I want to say. Yeah, that's unfortunate. So I'm probably just going to Colossified here. This is in the second main phase. Sometimes it's difficult to see when they attack. Yeah, it is very difficult from our perspective. This is not the semifinals. This is the third and fourth playoff. These were the players who lost in the semifinals. The finals is between Jerry Lee Williams and Carl... Manigat. Manigat. <laughs> These two players are playing for the third place trophy. I was just going into Scrap Dragon, all right. Carson Palmer has almost 400 yards passing in three, what's that, two or three touchdowns. I started him in fantasy this week. No, this is not the semifinals. This is the third and fourth playoff. Oh, third and oh, semifinals for E-Cup? I don't know what that means. <laughs> Do you know what that means? No. Okay. <laughs> All right, so Mike will be summoning Redox by banishing both of his Dragoon Game Watch are the Phalanx and a Corsesca. The Redox is in attack mode, which is an interesting decision. We know he has Flame Velgard face down, giving him the option of going into Colossal Fighter or, or some of the other various level 8s. You know he's just trying to set up a turn where he can flip a turn from the different dimension. They are playing for the Alternality Games third place trophy. Book of Moon. Oh, okay. Book In Book response Moon. to the mystical space typhoon. Oh, I see. So, it's interesting. I, now, Mike, no, see, Mike's in a difficult position here. Where because Andrew's at 8,000, Return might not be able to win the game because he has monsters that are face down that he's unable to synchro or exceed with. Oh, he has the Flame Guard, I guess. But that one face down monster might clog up his field. It'd be interesting to see exactly what happens. Ooh, the look on Andrew's face is not good. He had to ditch the Swift Skaker earlier in the game to revive the Effect Veiler. So his hand does not have Swift Skaker to the best of our knowledge. Yep, there we go, flip the Fame Bell guard. Yeah, the way Andrew's playing with his cards, it looks like he's not very confident. He's just, you know, flipping them, looking them around in his hand, picking them up and looking at them. It's interesting, like, what position here would put him in the best situation to win? What board state can he find if he can't necessarily deal 8,000 points of damage? And he also don't want to make a field that does 8,000 points of damage but loses to Swiss Scarecrow if you know that he runs more than one, which he does not. Okay, so now that Andrew's played his one Swiss Scarecrow, 
Mike is free to put 8,000 points of damage on the field without having to worry. I'm sorry. Oh, yes. Mike, Mike has Trident Dragon in his deck. Oh, wow. There it is. I was just about to think. Is there any way he can bring Trident Dragon out? And we've just seen it. Trident Dragon is there. Andrew scoops it up, and we're going into the third game. No, Trident Dragon makes its first appearance of the Ultra Reality Game Circuit Series live stream coverage. We've seen Montage Dragon. We've seen Trident Dragon. We've seen Gimmick Puppet Man. Whatever that thing is called. We've seen so many of the unique cards out there in this game. And Mike takes on the second game with Trident Dragon. From what I heard from <clears throat> from what I heard from those watching the top four between Jerry Lee Williams and Andrew Paler in the third game, Jerry drew an electric virus on a turn where all he would have been able to do was summon a blaster. Taking Andrew's start a spark dragon and sealing the game right there with Andrew at exactly 5,300 points of life. The blaster over the spark dragon would have killed the spark dragon, but Andrew had a field or a hand chock full of dragon rulers and a gravette chock full of dragon rulers and would have been able to take control and win the game there. But Jerry had the stars aligned, drew the electric virus on that turn. He had to draw electric virus and won the game. That feature match will be up, I believe, in video coverage at some point over the course of the next week. I was told it was an unbelievable match to watch. The crowd went crazy when the electric virus was drawn. And so far throughout this top 16, we've seen the stars align several times for Jerry Lee Williams, hitting a 5 off 6 cents in the top 16, followed by returning from a different dimension at multiple points in the game. So just a heads up to Carl. You might have to watch out for some unusual occurrences from Jerry Lee Williams. Anyway, I am Joe Gialando. I'm joining the booth here with Trevor Tibbetts. He's off on break for a little bit right now. But we have 950 viewers from all around the world watching the 440 players which ascended upon Worcester, Massachusetts for the third ever Ultra Reality Games Circuit Series event. It's been my honor to bring you round one coverage all the way up through round nine yesterday and the top 16 all throughout today. These are the third and fourth playoff between Mike S. Andrew Paler. At the conclusion of the third and fourth playoff, we'll be seeing the finals between Jerry Lee Williams and Carl Manigat. Carl's Montage Dragon, Mythic Tree Dragon, Mythic Water Dragon variant versus Jerry Lee Williams teched out Dragon Ruler deck. So here we are in game three. Andrew Paler will be going first, seeing as how he lost the previous duel. The question I've asked every single time the Dragon decks have begun, show me how many spells you opened with. So Andrews is examining the contents of his hand, methodically deciding how he wants to go about the final duel in both of these men's tournaments. He literally decides to pass. How many spells did he open with? The answer was zero. So Mike will have the opportunity to activate Ravine himself for the first time. Mike uh. will have the opportunity to play spell cards himself for the first time. He likes simply to set a back row. Andrew fires back with his own macro, presumably so he doesn't have to discard. It's probably one of the draw spells that he doesn't have a target for. So this is going to be a very methodical, slow-paced game here in the third and fourth playoff. Oh, Mike, unfortunately for Andrew, was able to find a Sacred Sword of the Seven Stars on his second turn, banishing Tempest and allowing him to search his deck for Phalanx or another Tempest. He's elected to search for Tempest. So that sword could be one of the crucial turning points in this game. It looked like both players had those hands where they'd have to fight through slow-paced, grindy games, but Mike was the first to find one of the draw spells, and now has found a second draw spell in Cards of Consonance. Scarring Phalanx, allowing him to draw two cards. I saw one of them to be a Dragon Savine, and another Cards of Consonance. So yeah, Mike's in the driver's seat right now. He has the draw power. He's cycling through his deck. He's sculpting a hand that he wants to see. Andrews is sitting back, hoping that he can find a draw spell at the top of the deck. Oh, and Mystical Space Typhoon. Destroying Mystical Space Typhoon. Look at that. Both of these players had very similar opening hands. Just very weak, very slow-paced, very methodical hands, but it was Mike who found the draw spell first and has now been able to capitalize on Andrew's poor, weak, slow-paced opening hand.
The finals is between Jerry Lee Williams and Carl Manigat. Manigat. This might be the first. Oh, do we know yet? Is Maxi there? It seems like every single time we've seen this situation, it has been. Ike's considering his options. And he's declared he's in failings effect, and Andrew just does not have the maxi. This is not good for Andrew. What kind of opening hand did Andrew open with? Let's take a look at his deck. What possible six cards did he open with three? He doesn't set anything, doesn't summon anything. Just an MST. Just MSTs. Just three MSTs. Yeah, we'll go to the wrong list. It's, it's in the pile somewhere. Oh, it's right there. No, it's right there. He must oh. have had a hand of just like MST, sword, sword, sword. Dragons. Re no, you can't do it now. Return. Maybe one dragon. Yeah, it's just. I am shocked here. He doesn't even have Maxi. A lot of the times when you have, I'll just pass. The opponent has, or you have Maxi in your hand. Special summons the Phalanx. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Andrew opened three Corsesca, two guard MST. Yeah, that would be insane. I guess that's the risk of running five level one tuners. You can presumably just draw all of them in your opening hand and not be able to do anything with it. <laughs> Lazar talking a little bit there in the background. Yes. So Spark Dragon hits the table and Goes in for uh, 2,500 points of damage, dropping Andrew Paler down to 5,500. That's the first damage done here in game three of our third and fourth playoff between Mike Espinsoa and Andrew Paler. Playing for the shiny, sparkly third place ARG Circuit Series trophy. And of course, at the conclusion of this match, we will certainly be going into the finals between Jerry Lee Williams and Carl Manigat. It looks like he has an electric virus in hand. Oh, Andrew. Oh, he Andrew. must have. To, ooh. It'll be crazy if out of nowhere, Andrew's just like electric virus, put 8,000 on the field, put him to the test. Do you have it? Yeah. Well, Andrew must have something in his hand. He's certainly sitting there examining all of the options. He's thinking. Again, one of the fantastic aspects of the ARG Circuit Series is that the top eight and beyond is untimed. Players like this, when they need the extra time to think about a decision at a crucial turning point in their tournament, they can make the correct decision. And here we see the Electro Virus discard take control of the Spark Dragon and the effect of Redox to summon Redox himself. Does Mike have the max C? He does, in fact, have Maxi. So Mike is able to use the Maxi and try and discourage Andrew from going for game here. If you're using Redox's effect in that manner, I would be willing to say you might be able to put enough damage on the field to win. So the question is, does Andrew have the wherewithal to ask Mike, do you have the Tragodia? I'm going to put you to the test. Mike has one Trigodia. That's it. Yep, we looked That's at that. That's the one card the that one he card. can draw. Yeah. And unlike uh, Swift Gecrow, Trigodia might have a huge effect if the Maxi draws enough cards.
Again, Andrew slowly looking through his extra deck. He's like to go and make an Exigra summon with the Redox along. He'd like to draw one more card. But if this is all that he has, oh, look at this. He's <laughs> Zera or Scrap Dragon. Andrew appears to be a visual thinker. And then, you know, putting both of the cards out like this and staring at them, visually looking how they look on the field. How does it feel? Am I going to win the game with this course of action? This is exactly the type of player that Andrew is. He likes to visually represent the things. Some players can just think in their head, point to the table, visualize how the play sequences will be. And other players like to physically have the cards in close representation to where they'll be on the field. And that will allow them to make what they believe to be the correct play. So, is that a, oh, that's a Red Dragon Archfiend, it looks that's like. That's what I was thinking. Oh, yes, Red Dragon Archfiend. So, oh. that's 5,500 points right there. Can he find the other 25? And then put Mike to the test and ask him, do you have Dragodia? There's title. There it is. Do you have Tragodia? That's the question. He does. Yeah, that's not what Andrew wanted to see. This singleton Tragodia has been here to save Mike time and time again. Which monster did he attack with first? Title. I believe. Oh, he plays the Trigodia in attack position. Uh, okay, that'll be interesting. Well, does he know that Andrew doesn't play enemy controller? Or, well, he obviously would know. Does Andrew play enemy controller? No, he doesn't look like it. So, that's a safe play. No, I would have just put it in defense mode. I, just the habit to put him in defense mode. Yeah, my fantasy football team's doing quite well. Look, Carson Palmer, Vincent Jackson, Cincinnati D, LaShawn McCoy. Looking good. Anyway, sorry. So Andrew's in a difficult position where he had to summon all those monsters. The Maxi is there. And Mike had the Singleton Tragodia, the one card in his 40 cards that could have made it so that he did not win this third and fourth playoff match. And the crazy thing is, oh, obviously, yeah, you put in you don't put in defensible because of Red Dragon Archfiend. Yeah, that was silly. When's the last time Red Dragon Archfiend hit the table? But now that forces it so that his creatures just go to die in battle. That's unbelievable. Trags at 3,600. <laughs> yeah, when was the last time Red Dragon Archfiend saw any play? Completely forgot about that interaction. That is incredible. That is absolutely incredible. So Gul Tarkovagus will banish Bla Blaster from his deck, allowing him to search his deck for another copy of Blaster. I believe this Trigodi is at 42. Oh man, yeah, this is this is huge. And now he'll be discarding the Blaster to take. Yeah. Oh, he'll be using it to just for Dragon Dream. Okay, I thought for a second he might have used it to take control of the yeah, title on the other side of the field. So he probably has another Dragon Reel in his hand anyway. Yeah, there. Oh, that's the Ducks. So if he didn't have Maxi the previous turn, Andrew, that is. Chances are he doesn't have it now. Mike knows that. So Mike, I think, is in great shape to become victorious here in the third and fourth playoff. He's simply going to discard a Dragon Ruler, take control of the title, summon Phalanx, or summon Ducks, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So Tragodia, I mean, an unusual card here today has been quite successful for Mike Espinsoa. He only has the one copy, but it's been there whenever he's needed it. It stopped all those game attempts. And here we see it in the third and fourth playoff, smashing Andrew Paler's dreams. So let's just see if he can finish it off, as we will expect him to do. Oh, first he's going to summon Phalanx. Yep, Ducks, Phalanx. 
Still no response like the previous turn. Brings up Adriana. Adriana to bring out the Phalanx, and he's considering to go into what looks like a Crimson Blade, so he might not have another Dragon Reel in his hand, which would be quite unusual with so many cards. I think I see at least a Redox in there. We have just about 950 players joining us, 950 viewers rather, joining us in Worcester, Massachusetts. We're watching the third and fourth coverage between Mike Espensola and Andrew Bayer. I am Joe Jolando, joined with Trevor Tibbetts in the booth. And at the conclusion of this match, we will be going towards the finals between Jerry Williams and Carl Manigat. A Dragon Ruler versus Dragon Ruler mirror match. One of which, Carl, is running the Mythic Tree Dragon, Mythic Water Dragon Engine, and a copy of Montage Dragon. So in the meantime, we'll watch Mike Espenzoa drop a Crimson Blade to the field. Presumably he might not believe he can deal the remaining points of damage. Or perhaps he can do it and have Crimson Blade's effect trigger. In case Andrew does have an out. Some kind of out. Yeah, which we don't know. I mean, he has the Swift Iron Scarecrow in his graveyard, so I'm not really sure what out Mike is playing around here. Yeah, this is over. There's no trap. So this this game is over, presumably. He just simply has to do it. But yeah, this game is in position to be over, that's for sure. Trigodi's at should be 3,600. Oh, 3,600, yeah. Fantastic. Yep, 3,600. Oh, 3,600, okay. So it's still quite a beefy Trigodian. Mike just is considering his decisions here. Yeah, I know, right? Just finish him off. That's what I'm thinking, too. Andrew Pollard runs one swift scarecrow. Yeah, it's in the graveyard already, too. Yeah. You should see the look on Andrew's face right now. He's just staring at Mike with this, this dull look on his face. Like, like, please, just play it out. Just finish it, please. More consideration for Mike Espinzoa. He's going to... What is he going to do? That's a good question. It looks like he was trying to redox. I'm not sure wh why. So he's going to go into a big eye and take the Red Dragon Archfiend. Interesting. All right. So he has a Dragon Archfiend. And now title to bring back. I would have rather just discarded title, a redox to take control of the title. But what can you do? So is this even enough to win? Yeah, it's still enough to win. Just a unique way of coming about to this conclusion. Or he'll get, yeah, this game is over, but it's just taking a considerable amount of time. Finals is after. Yep. Finals is after this. Between Jerry Williams and Carl Manigitz. So, yeah, all right, we officially have a board state of Stardust Spark Dragon, Red Dragon Archfiend, Crimson Blader, and Big Eye. For what it's worth, this isn't the worst way to end the field. I mean, you triggered your Crimson Blader, have a Spark Dragon. Still have a big eye. This might have been an unusual way of going about it, but I feel that perhaps he looked ahead in the future enough and saw that his plays can end this way. Yeah, relax, back, back, back. Okay, yep. So this, this yeah. should be it here. The game is over. Yeah, Andrew's only at 44. 
Yeah, Andrew wouldn't have drawn anything good anyway, so that's it. So Andrew has dropped the third and fourth playoff. Mike Espenzoer is officially the third place individual here at the Ultra Reality Games Circuit Series in Worcester, Massachusetts. We'll be now moving momentarily, once we get these two out of the feature match area, to the finals between Jerry Williams and Carl Manigat.